Hey everyone, in this tutorial I want to go a little bit more in depth with the blur palette because while I use the blur palette in just about all of my tutorials, I haven't really done a proper run through of its functionality. So I'm in DaVinci Resolve and I have a shot open and I have the blur palette selected here in front of me. And basically what I'm going to do in this tutorial is just step you through sort of some of the different options in the blur palette and how it works. So the blur palette sort of has three different modes of operation, and those can be toggled up here by using this dropdown, and the options are blur, sharpen, or mist. And blur and sharpen sort of overlap a little bit, but they do have different options, so I'll show you what those are. But first let's start with the blur mode, and this is the default mode, and basically what the blur mode will let you do is apply a Gaussian blur to your image. And this has pretty simple controls. Basically you have your radius, which is the primary control, and if it's at the default value here of 0.5, that means no blur or sharpening is being applied. But if you bring the radius up, that will start to add some blur into your image. And if you bring the radius down below 0.5, that will start to sharpen your image. Now by default, these three controls are sort of ganged together. So it's adjusting the red, green, and blue channels in a uniform fashion. But if you click up here, you can unlink those channels and this will allow you to adjust channels separately. And you can see that will give you a bunch of different looks and effects that you can play around with. Up here in the corner, I can reset that back to default. Over here, the HV ratio, this is the horizontal and vertical ratio of the blur or sharpening that you're applying. So again, by default, these are linked together. And as you bring up the slider, that will make the effect increasingly directional along the horizontal axis. And if you bring down the slider, that will make it increasingly directional along the vertical axis. So we can see that if I relink these and add some blur. And then as I bring this down, see that's changing how the blur is being applied. And if I bring it up, again, that's shifting how the blur is being applied there as well. I'm just going to reset these. The second mode in the blur palette is the sharpen mode. and in the sharpen mode, it's very similar to the blur mode. Uh, it just adds in a couple of additional controls and you'll get this option for scaling and also for coring softness and level. So what the scaling slider allows you to do is increase the amount of effect that is applied beyond the normal range of the radius slider. So one thing about this scaling control, if you are using the radius slider to add a blur, the scaling slider will have no effect. Just going to reset that. So in order to use the scaling slider, you need to be adding sharpening into your image. And once I've added in sharpening with the radius control, I can then use the scaling sliders to add in additional sharpening if I need to for my image. Down here at the bottom, I have a coring softness and level control. And these two controls work together to determine which areas of detail in your image are being affected by the sharpening. So the level control will set the threshold at which image detail is being omitted from the sharpening as you raise the coring softness. So the default level at zero is going to omit everything in the image except for the most highly detailed areas. Over here, the coring softness works in conjunction with the level control to limit how much of the image is being sharpened based on the threshold that you've set over here at the level. So if we set the level control up to 35 and we change the coring softness, you can see that this will sort of include or exclude areas of the image to be sharpened. And so using these two controls, you can choose which areas of detail in your image are being affected more or less by the sharpening control. So I'm just gonna reset this and now the third mode for the blur palette is the mist mode. And in the mist mode, we add in this mix control. And basically the mist mode will allow you to create an effect that's similar to a pro mist filter. And the way you do that is you need to bring the radius control down to add some sharpening. And then you can use this mix control down here. And as you bring this down, this will sort of soften areas of detail and add the effect that gives that sort of pro mist look. So that adjustment, you can just play around with to get an effect that you're looking for. So I hope that this more detailed look at the blur palette has been helpful. And as always, thanks for watching.